Number 10. In Marvel Comics, Wolverine is often depicted as being much shorter than many other superheroes. While his exact height can vary slightly in different comic book iterations and artistic interpretations, he's commonly described as being around 5 feet 3 inches or 5 feet 4 inches. This shorter stature contributes to Wolverine's portrayal as a scrappy, fierce, and tenacious fighter, as his height doesn't match the imposing physical presence of some other characters. Despite his relatively small size, Wolverine is known for his adamantium-laced skeleton, retractable claws, and incredible regenerative healing factor, making him a formidable and enduring character in the Marvel Universe. <laughs> Number 9. In comic book lore, Wolverine possesses a mutant healing factor that grants him enhanced resilience, allowing him to recover rapidly from injuries that would be fatal to ordinary humans. This healing factor makes him highly resistant to many forms of injury and illness. However, while Wolverine's healing abilities are impressive, they do have limits. Regarding drowning specifically, while Wolverine's healing factor provides him with incredible durability and survivability, there are scenarios where he could potentially drown. If he were rendered unconscious or incapacitated while submerged in water, preventing him from accessing air, it's conceivable that he could drown like any other individual. Moreover, in certain comic storylines or instances, characters with enhanced healing abilities like Wolverine have been shown to have vulnerabilities or weaknesses under specific conditions. Although these instances are often plot-driven and can vary based on the narrative needs of a particular storyline. Number 8. In various comic book adaptations and publications, Wolverine was frequently depicted smoking a cigar as part of his rugged and gruff persona. However, in more recent years, there has been a cultural shift away from portraying smoking in a positive or glamorous light, especially in media targeted at younger audiences. As a result, you might notice that recent comic book iterations or adaptations featuring Wolverine have minimized or excluded his smoking habit, opting instead to focus on other aspects of his character and abilities. <laughs> Number 7. It appears there might be a mix-up or confusion regarding Wolverine and FOM2. FOM stands for Friends of Old Marvel, a fan club and magazine published by Marvel Comics during the 1970s. It featured interviews, behind-the-scenes content, and information about Marvel's comic book characters. As for any specific connection between Wolverine and FOM2, there might not be a direct correlation. Wolverine's character did not debut until the 1970s in The Incredible Hulk No. 180, 1974, and he became a prominent character in Marvel Comics following his introduction. However, FOM2 could have contained content related to Wolverine or other Marvel characters, given its nature as a magazine for Marvel fans. Number 6. Wolverine briefly joined the Fantastic Four in issues 347 to 349 in 1991. During this period, the regular members of the Fantastic Four, Reed Richards, Sue Storm, Johnny Storm, and Ben Grimm, were temporarily unavailable, and Wolverine was asked to join the team as a substitute member. In this storyline, Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Woman were taking a sabbatical to work on their relationship and the Human Torch and the Thing were off on other missions. As a result, Wolverine, alongside Spider-Man and the Hulk, stepped in to help fill the gap and assist the remaining members of the team, Crystal, Ms. Marvel, Sharon Ventura, and She-Hulk. Wolverine's stint as a member of the Fantastic Four was temporary, and it was more of a situational substitution rather than a permanent team membership. Nevertheless, his involvement in this storyline provided an interesting dynamic within the team and offered fans a unique crossover between Wolverine and the Fantastic Four. <laughs> Number 5. In Marvel Comics, Wolverine has several children, either through biological means, clones, or adoptive relationships. Taken Akihiro, he is Wolverine's biological son, born from a union between Wolverine and his former lover, Itsu. Dakin possesses similar abilities to Wolverine, including a healing factor, retractable claws, and enhanced senses. Laura Kinney, X-23 while not Wolverine's biological daughter, Laura Kinney, also known as X-23, is a clone created from Wolverine's DNA. She was created to be a living weapon, possessing powers similar to Wolverine's, including a healing factor and retractable claws. Jimmy Hudson, in an alternate reality known as the Ultimate Universe. Jimmy Hudson is introduced as Wolverine's son. He has similar powers to Wolverine, including claws and a healing factor. Honey Badger, Gabby Kinney Honey Badger, 
also known as Gabby Kinney, is a clone of X-23 slash Laura Kinney, making her Wolverine's genetic granddaughter due to her clone lineage. Number 4. When Wolverine was initially introduced in The Incredible Hulk number 180, his claws were depicted as part of his gloves or gloves with extensions. However, in subsequent appearances, his claws were established as being a natural part of his mutant abilities. Later, it was revealed that Wolverine's claws are a result of his mutant powers. His skeletal structure includes retractable claws made of the fictional metal adamantium, which can extend through the skin between his knuckles at will. I hope you're enjoying this video. Before we get to the top 3, please could you take a moment to like and subscribe to my channel as it would be a great help. Number 3. Wolverine's extended lifespan, which spans centuries due to his mutant abilities and experiences, has afforded him the opportunity to learn and master multiple languages throughout his life. He's been shown to be fluent in various languages, including English, Japanese, Russian, French, German, and others. This linguistic prowess is often portrayed as a result of his extensive travels, interactions with different cultures, and experiences gained over time. Number 2. Wolverine made his first appearance in the comic book, The Incredible Hulk, number 180, released in October 1974. However, he only had a brief cameo appearance on the last page of that issue. Wolverine's first full appearance and battle with the Hulk occurred in the subsequent issue, The Incredible Hulk, number 181, published in November 1974. In this issue, Wolverine confronts the Hulk in a Canadian wilderness setting marking his official debut as a character in the Marvel Comics universe. His next appearance was in The Incredible Hulk number 182 for a few panels. Number 1. The Reavers, a group of cyborg mercenaries and enemies of the X-Men, created a clone of Wolverine. This clone was known as Albert. Albert was part of a duo along with another creation named LCD, a robotic girl who believed she was a human. Albert was designed to be a robotic duplicate of Wolverine, and was equipped with adamantium claws, similar to Wolverine's, though he lacked the healing factor and some other aspects of Wolverine's abilities. LCD was an advanced AI with a limited lifespan and a penchant for causing explosions. Thanks for watching. I hope you learn a few new things about the old knucklehead. See you again soon for another video.